Hi, this is my review of Alchemy, a source book for the Mystic Forces second edition role-playing game. If you haven't seen the Mystic Forces second edition RPG, I highly recommend that you watch my review that I'm going to put the link in the description below because this RPG feels classic but at the same time it feels really out of the ordinary, quite alien. For example, there are no humans in the Mystic Forces. The races that resemble humans are more on the humanoid side of things. They feel nothing at all like humans. So I highly recommend that you check out my review for this awesome RPG. I'm also going to put the relevant links to, that you can, so you can see when you, when you can get it. And uh, it's available as a PDF and as a print-on-demand book. Now let's talk about this alchemy source book. In the core rulebook, you have all the information about the alchemy skill and how to progress within that path. Uh, however, if you want to take full advantage of alchemy without homebrewing some things yourself, you need this alchemy source book. This book really surprised me uh, in, at the level of depth and detail that it reaches. It feels like an actual book within the game world. It feels like a herbal or alchemist handbook that one of the characters of the Mystic Forces would be using. Now let's talk about the quality of the PDF. The quality overall is great. My only nitpick, and this is a very small thing, is that uh, there are a few places, not that many, it's quite rare, where there is a bit of a redundancy, such as uh, produce the products, but it's quite rare. But the document is fully bookmarked, it's very well written, very well organized and explained. You have amazing looking illustrations that add a lot of character to the book. It feels somewhat artsy because of them and it adds to that level of authenticity that it feels like a handbook that a character would be using. Now let's talk about the content. Alchemy starts with a nice introduction to what this art is within the Mystic Forces 2nd Edition role-playing game. It's a very serious thing. There are, there are regulations as to who can use the different levels of alchemy. There are different stages. Uh, so products within a particular stage uh, escalate in, in the level of utility and power. So let's say if you're using something in stage 3, it's going to bring many benefits, but there's also, there also a risk of a devastating effect, sometimes even deadly. So there are regulations on the part of the defenders, probably the most important faction within the Mystic Forces Second Edition role-playing game. And this, I think, serves uh, as fuel for adventures. Maybe you are playing as alchemists who are working outside, outside of those regulations, or maybe you are uh, working for the defenders trying to hunt down some alchemists who are using uh, substances for evil. So uh, that in itself serves uh, to perhaps uh, empower an entire campaign with the alchemy theme. So you have information on the description and the ingredients of the different uh, reagents, um, a creation process, precautions, details on the unstable forms of alchemy, the required force of energy, and the fusion difficulty. The world of the mystic forces is really magical. It's quite high fantasy to the point that the characters uh, can reach a level of demigod status. And this uh, translates into the entire world uh, as well. So you're going to see these ingredients or reagents that are infused with the mystic forces. So the characters have to be really careful as to how they create these, these different substances that will um, bring benefits or even harm. It depends on how you are going to use them and the type of, of alchemy product. So you have information on the activation difficulty. And something that really amazed me of the entire book is that they went, uh, Joe made went to so much detail as to the point that it actually feels like a cookbook. If you're into the more immersive aspect of role-playing games uh, to the point of using props and role-playing different 
processes this book is not going to disappoint you if you want to like role play a, a laboratory session of sorts you're going to get the step-by-step -step process of creating these different concoctions maybe you can use some safe ingredients in, in real life maybe you can use like cinnamon or sugar or salt or um, food colorings to, to create all those different substances fruit juices i don't know <laughs> but you can uh, recreate the alchemical process at your home uh, of course, uh, with precautions. And so uh, then we get uh, information on the stage one alchemy. So you're going to get all the information on the different ingredients. Some of them are sparse. So for example, you have the Blondwig egg. The Blondwig egg comes from a large and aggressive bird known as the Blondwig. The Blondwig's feathers are mostly blue with red on the tips of their wings and in patches along their underside. You have some other things that are more common, such as the fox grape. The fox grape is a very small purple fruit that grows on small bushes. When the fox grape first begins to form in the early part of summer, they are bright red instead of purple. And then you have the glush mushroom, another common thing. This type of mushroom is quite small, usually no larger than 2 inches in height. They are purple with red specks decorating their top side. Now I'm just giving you a small paragraph of the information that you will find in this book. The information is quite extensive, so it really feels like uh, plants that you would find here on planet Earth. You have some other things, so for example you have the Golden Butterfly Powder. Found most anywhere on Oriathar, that's the game world. The Golden Butterfly is a beauty to behold. Their wings and body are coated with a glittering pow golden powder. Their antennas glow with a soft blue light. You have a lot of, il of illustrations. Not all of the ingredients are going to be illustrated, but most of them have these uh, really good looking art pieces. And then we have the information on the stage one products. So for example, we have acid description. This is a dark brown liquid that smokes slightly when exposed to air. It has a strong acrid stench and is capable of burning through many types of materials as well as living flesh. So you have all the ingredients, you need one flat canister of limestone, um, two coin canisters of sulfur, and uh, half uh, quantities of different things, etc. You have the different the creation, the entire creation process like uh, place the rock salt and sulfur into the half bottle containing the water and shake until it is mixed together place the shredded frog pine bark into a bowl and pour the half bottle of rock salt sulfur and water onto the bark make sure all of the frog pine bark is pressed under the mixture and this is just a small paragraph you get the entire process you could role play the entire process of alchemy and you have information and precautions, for example, avoid breathing the smoke that rises from the acid. It can cause severe headaches, burning of the eyes, and difficulty breathing, and you have the effects. If this acid comes into contact with a living being's skin, it will inflict 1d8 points of damage per turn for 4 turns as it burns and blisters the flesh. All of the information, the level of depth and detail is amazing. So you have other things, so for example, we have green dye. This is a dark green odorless liquid used for dyeing fabrics. And the effect, you, you can <laughs> paint clothes and different materials with it. And you have other things like uh, fool's gold, glue, mm, substances to produce hallucinations and intoxication. And then you have stage two alchemy. I, again, you have a description of all the ingredients uh, some of them are rare, some of them are a bit more common. So, for example, on the rare side, we have the Blast Berry. The Blast Berry is a smooth, round berry. It is bright red in color and is approximately coin-sized. They are found all throughout Oriathar, but only during the second gray season and summer. They grow on small trees and are found in open meadows, where they can receive plenty of sunlight. You have uh, this that is uh, sparse in its availability, that is the blue spike leaf. This small plant is fairly short, usually around 6 inches in height. The entire plant is, a bl is blue in color, almost appearing to glow. It is full of glossy bright blue lips that are diamond shaped, usually 10 to 15 lips per plant. These lips have a very acrid scent 
that can cause one's eyes to burn and water. You have some other things in stage 2 that are more common, like the log snail. The log snail is a small hard-shelled snail about the size of a pea. The snail itself is solid black. Its shell is bright yellow with two black stripes across the top. So you have all the information on the stage 2 ingredients and let me tell you about the stage 2 products so you can see that they are a bit more spectacular and perhaps even more useful depending on the situation than the stage 1 products. So you have Dragon's Voice. This is a purple sweet smelling liquid that has a faint green glow to it. As well we have the list of ingredients, the creation process, quite detailed, the information on, on precautions, because, for example, if more than one half bottle of Dragon's Voice is uh, drank by the same being in a single day, they will suffer an extremely sore throat and will completely lose their voice for 1d4 days. And the effect is, several large swallows of this liquid will co cause the voice of any ruling race, with the exception of Morgan, to become extremely loud and booming, much like the voice of a natural dragon, but even more intense. I think this is going to be quite useful on the battlefield. And you have other more self-explanatory products, such as Explosion, with the information of how much damage it can deal, of course. You have some other things as well, so for example, there is the Fish Float, a dull, red, odorless liquid. And its effect. Pouring at least half of a half bottle of this liquid into water will cause all small and medium-sized fish within 50 feet of where it is poured in to float to the surface. These fish are paralyzed and unable to swim for 24 turns, after which time they fully recover. So it's basically something useful in a more violent or direct uh, fishing. And then you have other things such as a poison that can cause death. Now let's talk about stage 3 alchemy. And here uh, things get really serious. The activation and fusion difficulty escalate quite a bit. And let's talk about the ingredients. And as you can imagine, the uh, side effects or the disastrous um, effects that can result from poor alchemy work can be quite devastating. So you have things such as crystal leaf, and this is quite rare. This peculiar looking plant is tall and slender, averaging two feet in height. Its leaves are very thin and fragile, and have the appearance of being made from clear crystal. These leaves reflect all the colors of the rainbow when light strikes them. You have some other things like, for example, uh, green steel, which is sparse, and then green steel is very important in the Mystic, Mystic Forces 2nd Edition role-playing game because uh, it's used in creating some of the best weapons that you can find. Green steel is refined from a specific ore found embedded deep within mountains. True to its name, green steel has a deep green tint. You also have uh, similar things such as uh, liquid fire. You also have a uh, red slug slime, which is very rare. You also have information on sun crystals, which are sparse. Now let's talk about some of the alchemy stage 3 products, uh, which are really powerful, and I think that they will give you an edge in almost any situation, as long as you use them carefully. So for example, you have Apocalypse. A fiery red liquid that emits a light pink stream. Oh, sorry, steam. It has an acrid odor. Now, you have to be really careful when mixing this, otherwise it will explode in your face and could probably kill you if you're not careful, depending on the quantity and the situation. Uh, the effect of this product is... The effect is very similar to a stage 2 alchemy product, explosion, fire, but it's much more powerful. Dropping a small fragment of smallsite into the apocalypse liquid activates it, at which time it begins glowing brightly. You have approximately 3 seconds after this point until it explodes with catastrophic, sorry, catastrophic force. Anything within 200 plus 1d100 feet of the blast receives 3d20 plus 80 points of damage. Quite dangerous. And you have other uh, concussions that will give you protection against cold or against flame. Some will allow you to create stones. Some will produce giant growth. 
As you can see, all of these Alchemy Stage 3 products are not to be messed with and they could even affect the game world significantly. So, you even have instant healing herbs, many things that are useful outside and inside of battle. You have this one that is the Life Force Retainer, a thick and grainy golden liquid. It has a sweet, pleasant smell. Drinking this product no more than 8 hours prior to dying allows a being to be safely resurrected up to 3 hours after death. The normal safe resurrection time is only 2 turns. Now, near the end of the book, you have the units of measurement further adding to the realism and authenticity of the book. You have information on different containers used in the, in the world of Oriathar. In the land of Oriathar, you have information on bottles, canisters, flasks, vials, everything that you can use to store all of those uh, alchemy products. You have uh, tables uh, organizing the alchemy ingredients and products. You have the products table, alchemy ingredient summary table, etc. This is also a very important point of this book. I think this book serves for insp as inspiration for your own uh, homebrew alchemy products and ingredients. So what do I think of this alchemy source book for the Mystic Forces 2nd edition RPG? I think this is a must have. Unless you do not want alchemy at all in your game, you need this book. This is going to give the characters an advantage or an edge when facing off against the most powerful enemies in the game, perhaps dragons or shadow demons, and when they are trying to figure out how to solve a particularly difficult situation, because here you have the 68 different alchemy ingredients and 43 different alchemy products, so there's something to be used in any situation that will probably serve as a solution for an entire adventure and uh, the adventure part is really important as well you could have adventures uh, just focused on finding a very rare alchemy ingredient or perhaps trying to find a forgotten recipe of an, a potion or some oil or, or anything that you can think of that will uh, produce an extraordinary even uh, divine effect so I highly recommend that you get this source book and it's just amazing the level of detail of the recipes. It really it makes you feel that you have an authentic uh, book uh, printed in Oriathar to put it in a way. Uh, so definitely get Alchemy. Thanks for watching my review. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know. See you later.